Uh, Takao is, of course, well known in the field of EOS and ERCP. Is the head of the gastroenterology and hepatology department of uh, Tokyo uh, Medical University. I know that you have been trained in Niigata Prefecture for pathology, and we are not usually trained for pathology in, in Europe. So, congratulations. Yeah. So, your talk is about uh, what is new, uh, 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 especially in international EOS and especially in Japan. So, thank please. You. Like, thank you for a kind introduction, Cherry. And I'm very happy to join the, with you, uh, very outstanding endoscopist. And so let's get started my video, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Takao Ito in Tokyo. First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much, Professor Inoue, for having me here. My talk is on the intervention of US in Japan. I disclose my COI in the slide. Nowadays, as you can see this right, there are a lot of interventional EOS technique except FNA, CPN, drainage, ablation, ethanol injection, dental exhale injection, vascular treatment, implantation, new technology like uh, stone removal, gastrojejunostomy, etc. How about the situation of interventional U.S. in Japan? PubMedo shows about uh, 1,000 papers published in Japan until now, but more than 19% of all papers are on the U.S. FNA. Before talking on the interventional ESCs in Japan, I will show the Japanese insurance system in each interventional ES procedure. For example, of all interventional ES procedure, only CPN, pancreatic fluid correction drainage, bile duct drainage, for obstructive jandice, and the pelvic abscess drainage are definitely covered by Japanese insurance. Looking at the suboptimal indication, gallbladder drainage and stone removal for the treatment of obstructive jaundice may be covered by, but it depends on insurance inspectors in each domestic area. The other procedure of interventional EOS are not covered by insurance. They are permitted only for clinical research after standard or special IRB approval. Since time is limited, I'd like to introduce four field interventional EOS in Japan. First, CPN. Dr. Doi and his colleague show usefulness of celiac ganglia neurolysis without serious adverse event. It is a very nice paper from Japan. And uh, also another paper re report, uh, viscous phenol glycerol might be preferable comparing to standard ethanol injection. I guess now the uh, multi-center study is ongoing. However, in this year, one RCT from Japan showed US CPN might not be useful in the oxycodone fentanyl era. To be honest, in my personal opinion, I totally agree with this. Nowadays, in fact, CPN is not popular in Japan. Anyhow, the latest summary of this topic shows relatively high technical and clinical success rate, more than 19% of this procedure. However, uh, we should remind really but serious adverse events like uh, paraplegia may happen. Let's move on to the pancreatic fluid correction drainage standard uh, drainage technique. Nowadays, not only plastic stent, but also metal stent, in particular lumen opposing metal stent lamps uh, used in the world for this procedure. 
Also, we have reported the first clinical study on the lamps for pan pancreatic fluid correction. There was no approval metal stent until two years back, surprisingly. Fortunately, hot lamps has approved in Japan on October 2018, just two years back. Since then, we can use these、uh, fantastic devices. And the, nowadays, a lot of endoscopists prefer this procedure in Japan. So, regarding US guided b i l a t o r y drainage, USBD, recently several RCT between USBD versus ELCP or、uh, PTBD have been reported in patients with obstructive jaundice. Those results suggest USBD is not inferior to ELCP or PTBD. Rather, ESBD is not superior to ERCP and PTBD regarding post ERCP pancreatitis and post procedure pain, respectively. Nevertheless, the latest Tokyo Guideline 2018, which describes optimal treatment technique for acute cholangitis, it recommends. ELCP drainage is still first line drainage for not obstructive jaundice but acute cholangitis based on the evidence. There are、uh, little evidence、um, in this field for acute cholangitis. So, here you can see our latest study on this topic. Our data suggests urgent or early b i l a r y drainage, usually in uh, uh, 96 hours, by USBD can be feasible and safe alternative procedure for patients with acute cholangitis. Also, there is a tendency of early recurrent b i l a r y abstraction. Another topic in this field is hot lamps for US guided c o l e d o c o d u r e n o s t o m y Small caliper 8 to 10 mm in diameter hot lamps is transduodenally placed in the dilated extrahepatic bile duct. It is relatively easy and fast procedure if hot lamps is used. Very nicely deployment in the bile duct. And finally, we deploy the proximal flange at the duodenal side and the direct vision. And you can see a、uh, very nicely drain the bile duct. So, you can see a prospective multi center study outcome. We feel very comfortable or acceptable outcome using、uh, hot lamps for US guided c o l e d o c o d u o d e n o s t o m y Last but not the least, It is our most interesting procedure recently, stone removal. Of course, almost all b i l d u c t stones are extracted t r a n s p a p i l l a r y by ERCP. However, in surgical a l t e r n a t anatomy p a t i e n t stone removal is not always successful. Due to the long upfront loop, or very difficult on i v e p a p i l l a to cannulate.
Here you can see our data with a label of literature on the e balloon endoscopy assisted ERCP in surgical altered anatomy. Even in high volume center, about 10% cases not always successfully performed. In such patient, recently we frequently perform use assisted stone extraction, like this schema. Multi-center study Japan and Korea showed the success rate was 72% and the mean procedure time was 45.5 minutes in spite of difficult cases, which was surgical altered anatomy and ERCP fair, cannulation fair cases. So next, I'd like to show an inter interesting case. First, uh, impacted CBD stone in patient with uh, uh, subtotal gastrectomy was low and Y. Third, uh, balloon endoscopy assisted ERCP case. In this case, because of uh, non dilated interhepatic product, we use. Uh, 22 gauge needle, FNA needle, and fortunately we obtained the nicely cholangiography, and then 018 inch guard wire is, is advanced into the CBD, and then again the conscious medium injection. After that, uh, we exchange with uh, 025 inch guide wire using a cassette, standard catheter, and the guide wire pass through the papilla. And the little by little, the dilation of the papilla, firstly using a 10 millimeter in diameter small balloon, and then the large dilating balloon for the stone removal, stone extraction. And finally, little river balloon inflation, and push the stone out from the bardac to the Duodeno, and we confirmed no residual stone. This is a simple uh, use guided transhepatic stone removal, anti-grid stone removal. So next case, uh, you can see a much pro uh, bilateral stone, interhepatic bilateral stone in pa uh, patient with hepatic ostomy and row and Y. And uh, also, uh, balloon endoscopy assist ERCP failed due to the long, long afferent loop. So 19 gauge FNA needle is advanced into the interhepatic bilateral and you can see a very nice uh, cholangiography and a lot of stone filling a defect in the bile duct and the jejunum. And the guide wire advance through the anastomotic side. After dilation of the anastomotic side, using a uh, little river balloon, push the stone out of the bile duct, little by little, push out, push out, using a contrast medium. So finally, a lot of stone uh, completely extracted into the uh, duodenum. The just one step. Last year, we reported U.S. assisted ERCP, including stone removal, was useful with high technical success rate without serious adverse event. So, ladies and gentlemen, in my conclusion, indication of interventional U.S. in Japan is expanding. However, for the purpose of the distribution of this technique, dedicated devices for interventional U.S. is mandatory. 
Still, uh, like uh, another country, national regulation for critical research is a big, a large obstacle. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your kind attention. Congratulations, Takao. Thank you. Great presentation. Great presentation. Uh, just observe that we are more or less 7,000 attendees. Huh? Yeah. And thanks to Aru in a way. Congratulations also, Aru. And I know that uh, the, the, our Japanese colleagues are very, very active in uh, uh, Therapeutic US. Yeah. I will let a question to Thomas. I have a provocative question from my side because you spoke about stones. Could US replace cholecystectomy? Uh, it, it, it is a good question. Uh, in terms of cholecystectomy, uh, globular stone, uh, I don't think so. The surgical cholecystectomy is uh, uh, much, much uh, reliable and established technique. So first line is uh, uh, laparoscopic cholecystitis. And then in critical patient or uh, difficult cases, uh, as a one of option, uh, uh, translumenal, uh, like uh, a stone removal, not the cholecystectomy. Uh, okay. Using uh, cholecystectomy, many years ago, you know right? the notes, notes technique, not of course. Technique. Yeah, but you will, you will, you will decrease the need for cholecystectomy. That's I wanted to tell, at least to to predict, maybe. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, maybe a question from Thomas and by then yeah, we will. I'm Terry, I tend to disagree. For the normal gallbladder, um, there have been attempts for stone removal which were unsuccessful, and by uh, by attacking the, the gallbladder to the duodenum, you, you make it even more immobile. So I'm not so sure. Okay. But uh, Takao, um, the, the, it's, it's a problem with, which can be solved, but the problem is ERCP is one technique, PTBD is one technique, USBD is maybe 10 techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, it's through the liver and it's through the duodenum and it's, uh, you know, uh, rendezvous and uh, etc. So what, uh, what would be your preferred technique? It seems that your main working field is through the liver into the le uh, left bile duct system. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, th thank you so much. Yes. In, in my personal opinion, I'd like to perform a hepatico gastrostomy. The trans gas, uh, trans uh, hepatic biliary drainage is much safer, and we can we can uh, have uh, the uh, trans hepatic parenchymal uh, root means uh, no obvious bile leakage or something. That's why. So basically, I prefer the trans uh, gastric trans hepatic bile duct drainage. Okay, we, uh, that, there's one, one additional question before we go on. Um, with PTBD, you try to establish a channel because there is a, a great fear of uh, bile leakage, you mm -hmm. know, if you pull the catheter out. Yeah. Is it similar for the left transhepatic approach that you have to establish a firm channel uh, to continue working or um, what's the concept? Do you pull it out right after and not afraid of leakage? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, uh, similarly, similar to the PTBD, uh, it may happen so many uh, adverse events when the, we fail or uh, interrupt the procedure. And that's why so we have to uh, uh, so decrease the uh, step during this procedure. The one step uh, drainage much better, such kind of a system. Okay, thank you Takao, we are running.